In order for us to be able to describe the quantum state of any atom using the total angular momentum quantum number given by lowercase j, we can use a method or a system known as the spectroscopic notation. Now, the spectroscopic notation basically utilizes three quantum numbers. So, the principal quantum number, which is given by lowercase n, which is a positive integer that begins with 1 and increases by increments of 1. So, n could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Now, the second quantum number that the spectroscopic notation uses is the orbital quantum number given by lowercase l. But instead of actually using the numerical value, we use a letter. So when L is equal to zero, that corresponds to capital S. When L is equal to one, that corresponds to capital P. When L is equal to two, that corresponds to capital D. When L is equal to three, that corresponds to F. When L is equal to four, that corresponds to G, and so on. So basically, instead of using the numerical value for the orbital quantum number, we use the letter, but the letter is capital. Capitalized. Now, the third and final quantum number that we must use when utilizing the spectroscopic notation is the total angular momentum quantum number that is given by lowercase j. Now, in the previous lecture, we said that j can be calculated using the given orbital quantum number L as, as well as the spin quantum number ms. So basically, to use the spectroscopic notation, we have to actually know what the spin quantum number is. Now notice j can never be a negative value. j is always a positive value, where ms is either negative one half or positive one half. Now, the spectroscopic notation for a single electron system, for an atom that contains a single electron, is given by this notation. So n, where n is the principal quantum number l, which is the orbital quantum number, and the subscript for l is j, which is the total angular momentum quantum number. So, let's look at the following three examples in which we're going to use the spectroscopic notation to state the quantum state of our atom. So, example one, using the spectroscopic notation, determine the quantum state of the hydrogen atom in the ground state. So, we're assuming we have a neutral H atom, and that means we have a single electron. So, to use the spectroscopic notation, we basically have to determine what N is, what L is, as well as J. So, n is equal to 1, l is equal to 0, which basically corresponds to the uppercase s. So that means our n is 1, our l is s, what about our j? So remember, j has to be a positive value, and to determine what j is, we have to basically take the sum of the spin quantum number and the orbital quantum number. So, L is equal to zero and MS can either be negative one half or positive one half. Now, the only one that works is the positive one half because the negative one half will give us a negative J value and we know from this statement that that cannot actually be true. So that means we plug in the positive one half for our spin quantum number and we see that J is equal to positive one half. So finally, if we use this spectroscopic notation, we see that we have 1s with the 1 half subscript. So this represents our quantum state of the neutral hydrogen atom in the ground state. Now, let's move on to example two. Now, find the possible quantum states for a single electron in an excited state of the hydrogen atom if we know that the electron is found in the 2p orbital. So basically, we know that the principal quantum number n is equal to 2, and we know that p signifies our l equals 1. So that means our letter is uppercase P. 
Now, what about the J value? Well, for this particular J, or for this particular L, which is equal to L equals 1, our spin quantum number can still be either one of two values. So now we have J is equal to 1 plus minus 1 half, and we see that we have two possible spectroscopic notations for our quantum state, where J is 1 half, or J is 3 divided by 2. Two. So one quantum state is 2p one half and the other possible quantum state is 2p three halves. Now let's move on to the final example. Now we basically want to repeat example two but now our electron is found in the 3d orbital. So now our L is equal to 2. So we know that n is equal to 3. That's the principal quantum number. The L is equal equal to 2, that is equal to uppercase D. Now what about our J? What about the total angular momentum quantum number? So once again we apply this equation where ms is either positive one half or negative one half. So we see that J is either equal to three halves or five halves. And that means these are the two possible spectroscopic notations for the quantum state of this excited hydrogen atom in the single electron system. So we either have 3d 3 halves or 3d 5 halves.